Mmm, stupid level one adventurers. What do you mean you didn't buy a sword? Oh, almost on me. Why are dungeons dark? If this doesn't work out, I'm going back to farming. Die! Hallelujah! Back foul beast turn undead! Ah! Hey guys, welcome back to Creatures, Caverns, and Crafting. Today we're going to take a look at Ultimate Dungeon Terrain. This is a piece of terrain that was perfected by Professor Dungeon Master over at the Dungeon Craft. Now, of course, I'm going to put my own post-apocalyptic spin on things, and we're going to turn this into Ultimate Wasteland Terrain. To start a project, I'm simply going to take the Lazy Susan and put this against some XPS foam. I'm then just going to trace out the entire Lazy Susan there, and I'm going to move it for you guys so you can see. It should look something like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a utility knife or if you have a maybe a kitchen knife of some sort, and we're just going to carve that out. Here I'm using a steak knife. And what we're going to do is we're going to pay particular attention to the sides here. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you want this to be nice and smooth, you can take maybe some sandpaper and do that. Next, I'm just going to put this on the floor. I'm going to take a big rock. Actually, I'm going to grab two so we can uh, mix up the texture on this. And I'm just going to start beating this down. Notice I've got a cushion underneath. And that's just to kind of protect it a little bit. You can go as hard as you want. You can even use pavers. What we're looking for is just uneven surfaces. Here I am just chopping a little bit more. And it's going to look really nice. Don't worry about it, guys. Give it a nice whack. And then we're going to move on. To add some character to the terrain, I'm simply going to start carving some cracks into the XPS foam. And to do that, I'm going to use the knife that I showed you guys earlier. We're simply just going to dig that down in there, remove the excess foam. Once we're done, it should look something kind of like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a black wash. And this is the recipe used by Black Magic Craft. You can use your own recipe if you have that. You can even use a null and all. But we're just going to put this all over the entire project. Like so make sure that we focus on getting it into those cracks as well. And we're just going to start brushing that on. And once we're done, the project should look something kind of like this. Once our black wash is dry, we're going to start applying some paint to the surface. And to do this, I'm going to use a sponge and just start dabbing it on like so. For this application, I'm using a butter pecan, but you could use maybe a light tan or a light brown. Again, we want to keep this nice and light. It doesn't have to go on heavy. And don't worry about the lettering on the foam. That will blend when we add our second coat. Now we're going to move on to using a bark brown. And we can do this while the butter pecan is still wet so we can get kind of a wet blend. And again, we want to just apply this nice and light. If you need to build in certain areas, you can do that. And we're going to cover the entire project and allow that to dry. Once the terrain has dried, we're going to go ahead and move on to a dry brush. And I'm using a cool white for this. You could use maybe a vintage white, maybe a suede, or even a light gray. Don't be in a rush to do this. Make sure we get all the excess paint off our brush before we apply. we should be looking good. So now we're going to flip over to the other side of the Ultimate Wasteland Terrain and we're going to create ourselves a road and to do this we're going to utilize some foam sheets. What I want to do is cut this out about four and a half to five inches wide and we want to go the entire length of the XPS foam. Now we want to pay close attention to the edges. Remember this is a wasteland so we might not want straight edges. So here I'm just roughing them up using a pair of scissors. Now we're going to apply some PVA glue. We want to make sure that we pay special attention to the edges. 
we just want to make sure that this is also applied evenly. And once we've done that, we'll go ahead and stick it down to the XPS foam. And we'll put something heavy on it and allow it to dry overnight. Next, I'm going to take a hot glue gun and I'm just going to pick up some bits and pieces I have lying around. Mainly, we're going to use some granny grating, maybe some rocks, some matchsticks, just anything that might break up the surface area. When applying bits and pieces, I want to make sure that everything lies really flat. If not, I need to create a hole and recess it into the board itself. Remember, if you have something sticking up, it's not going to lay flat when you put it on the Lazy Susan. While our glue gun is still hot, I'm going to start applying some beads to the surface like so. And we want to make sure that we don't burn the foam. So don't press down hard, just allow a nice gentle stream. And what we're going to do is just branch this off. If you've watched my post-apocalyptic dungeon tiles, I do a similar method as well. Make one more branch here. And we'll do this a few other spots on the board. All right, guys, here we have the board. Everything is nice and flat. I've recessed the rocks. I've also put a paper clip, huge matchsticks. Even put a little hole there. We'll remove the foam there. All right, we're good to go here. For the road, I'm going to use a Vallejo Earth Texture Acrylic. Now, there are other pastes out there. You're more than welcome to try your own. And what we're going to do is just start spreading this evenly out on the surface using a putty tool. We want to try to avoid any big buildups. Then we're going to let that dry. For the surface, I'm going to start by applying some wood glue. You could use Mod Podge or white glue if you don't have that. And I'm going to take two types of turf. First, I'm going to use some kitty litter. This is the really cheap stuff. You could even use maybe some oil dry. I'm also going to use some fine turf. You could use playground sand if you don't have access to that. And what we're going to do is just start applying this on the board like so. If you need to, you can also tap this down with your fingers just to make sure it gets a good adhesion. Once we're done and we've covered everything, we're going to allow it to dry for a few hours. Next, I'm going to take a bottle of wood glue and water. I'm just going to start spraying this onto the surface. Notice I am blocking the road using some cardstock. We're going to get everything nice and saturated, allow it to dry overnight, and then if we need to, we can apply a second coat. Once our glue has had a chance to dry, we're going to go ahead and tape off the road using some painter's tape. And now we're going to use this Rust-Oleum brown paint and we're just going to start priming the board. Now I'm going to step back when I do this. I'm going to do this outdoors. Nice light coats. Next I'm going to do some dry brushing starting out with some bark brown. Then we're going to move on to a nutmeg brown. And then finally we're going to start taking some Golden Dawn and using that for some highlights. For our bits and pieces, I'm going to take some burnt sienna and some silver, mix those together and just start painting the metal parts out. To tie everything together, I'm just going to apply a black wash and allow it to dry. Now we're going to move on to our wasteland effects. And what I'm going to do is I've got a couple of colors here. I've got a transparent green, a kiwi green that we're going to put on the bees that we did. We have a purple and an orange and what we're going to do is just splash those all around on the surface lighten some areas darker than others if you need to blend it with the white you can do that now some of you may be pointing out that the roads look awful smooth for this being a wasteland and i'm way ahead of you what we're going to do now is we're going to add some cracks into the road like so and to do that i'm just going to use a utility knife we're going to carve that in and then i'm also going to take a pin and just widen up the cracks we can also use the pen to push holes into the surface, like so. And if we need to pull anything out, we can also use a pair of tweezers. I have some pliers here, and we just grab a little bit and pull it out. Here's a picture after I've finished adding the cracks. And to add some extra detail, what I'm going to do is first start off with a dark gray. 
we're going to apply this very wet to the road let me grab a tray for you guys so you can see I don't know if you can tell but I've watered this down quite a bit and I've applied it to the entire road now while this is still wet we're gonna take a, another gray this is a little bit lighter and we're gonna start to wet blend this around the cracks what we want to try to do is create almost like a highlight effect We're also going to take an even lighter gray and start mixing that in as well. Put a little bit on the brush so you guys can see. And like so. And again, we want to do this while it's wet so that we can blend it. If it gets too bold, that's fine. Just add a little bit more of the other color. We're going to do that all along the cracks. When we're done, we should get something that looks kind of like this. So now I'm going to take some pigments and I'm going to start with the light sienna. I'm also going to use this slate. Hold it closer so you guys can see. And a natural umber. And we're going to take some acrylic paint thinner. I'm going to put all this into a tray, like so. And we're just going to simply start mixing these together. Now guys, this is more of an advanced technique. Um, you can't really mess anything up, so if you want to try it, you can. But if you don't have this material, I don't want you to go out and spend a fortune on it. You might simply get by by applying a nice wash. You could do a brown wash, maybe even a black wash, and tone down those highlights. Once we've allowed our pigment to dry for a few hours, we're gonna take a damp sponge, and we're gonna just start lightly scrubbing the excess pigment away. You can go very light with this. Also remember that after you're done, if you're not pleased with the amount of pigment that you've removed, you can always rinse out your sponge and go over this with a second pass. As an optional step, I'm going to apply pigments directly to the ultimate wasteland terrain. And to do that, what we're going to do is just apply a little bit onto the brush we're going to give the brush a tap here we go and once we have it in the desired location we'll just kind of rub it in with a brush I'm using the natural umber in this application it has a really nice rust effect now I'm going to use a light sienna a little bit on the brush just tap it like so and guys when you're working with pigments a little goes a long way so it's always good to just kind of lightly apply it brush it in and if you want to add more you can do that this is looking really good awesome our last step is to apply a Minwax polyurethane to the front and the back. We'll allow this to dry and maybe apply a second to third coat. Guys, let's see what this looks like on the table. And here we have the final project. I had a blast putting together this build. If you haven't already, please check out the Dungeon Craft. He has excellent tutorials on ultimate dungeon terrain. He has a sci-fi terrain, a wilderness terrain, a sewer terrain even an Ultimate Dungeon Train 2.0. I'm going to leave those links down in the comment section so that you can follow along. Of course, this is my own spin on it, post-apocalyptic wasteland. I hope that you enjoyed it. As always, we'll leave you with the video.
guys, that's a wrap for this week. I really appreciate your viewership. If you haven't, please hit that like button, subscribe, and follow. Send a lot of new subscribers. Want to thank you guys for all the comment and support. As always, please stay safe. We'll catch you next week.